hello and good afternoon everyone uh, thank you again for joining free online lesson so my name is Nabi Fikri Mishaiza and I am an application engineer for chat system right so for today's topics will be the AutoCAD 3D basic so we're going to take a look on how to create a 3D modeling inside of AutoCAD all right so basically this is the agenda for today so we're going to use the 3D tools for the AutoCAD to create this particular valve shape. So we're going to create, uh, we're going to, uh, the first things as I'm going to introduce you the 3D tools, how we can switch from 2D to AutoCAD 3D interface. And then we're going to take a look on the 3D creation tools such as Primitive, Extrude, and Revolve. And then we're going to uh, do some editing, smooth cut, Fine. Lastly, from this 3D object, we're going to generate a 2D view that looks something like this. All right, so let me just change into my AutoCAD. So we will be using this as a uh, reference. All right, so from the AutoCAD, as you can see over here, we're still on the 2D interface. So what you can do to change into 3D, so you can go into the gear icon at the below over here, then you can select 3D modeling. So once you have select, you will have access to this 3D modeling tool. So you should have modeling, mesh, so that everything is on. Listen. But there are some other, uh, some other panels that we don't need, such as mesh, group. So I'm going to turn that one off for a bit. So let me just turn off mesh and the group and um, probably we don't need the views we just turn off the view okay uh this view okay so we do need this ending view over here which allow us to create a 2d so right now we're already into the 3d interface so we can use this compass over here to change into our view so we can go into the front view to the left view and if I want I can select this home button and this will change into the uh to the asymmetric view right so you can also click at this particular point over here to change into isometrics all right so to start uh, we can take a look over here. Uh, so for this part, I'm going to start with the flange and then we can start with the uh, body over here. So over here, we have multiple things that we can use. Most basically is the primitive. Primitive allow you to uh, easily create box in the simple shapes, simple like this. You might not use this much, but this is quite uh, useful if you want to quickly create this particular shape. So I'm going to start with creating a cylinders, right? And I want this to be around 50 millimeter in size. And the length of this will be around 50. Right, so let me just move it a bit. So what you see over here, it's already 3D. So if I click my middle of button, I can pan around. So if I want to rotate around, I can press shift and middle mouse button and it's allow me to rotate. But if you see over here, it's still 2D, but this is not actually 2D, but it's more on a wireframe, which only see the edge of your object. So to change your view, you can go at the top over here and then you can drop down this 2D wireframe and then you can select other types of view that you want. Maybe I want to see the hidden view only, or maybe I want shaded, or for this case, I'm going to select shaded with edges. So I can see the edges much more clearly. But, so I can use some of this primitive object to create this uh, simple object quickly. So other way you can also use draw and then you can extrude or maybe loft or revolve. So in this case, you need to have a 2D first in order to you to extrude into 3D. So for you to draw some things, you need to draw at this background over here. And this will only be drawn on the XY plane, right? So if I go into the front, so I don't see the 
text what plain. So if I try to draw some things, most likely, sometimes you cannot draw. You cannot draw that particular. So let's say I draw something like this. And if I try to move, then you will see it is actually drawn on the X and Y. So let me just go to top X and Y. Right, so just remind, uh, just remember that. So for this case, I'm switching to the X and Y face by clicking at the top. And I want to draw the body of the buff. So I'm going to use polygon six, let's say, and this will be the centers and the radius for this. Let me see from here, estimate it around, uh, let's say around 25. 25 right, so this will be the body of uh, my buff. Now let me just rotate around to go into the 3D perspective view. Right, so before I extrude into 3D, so one thing that you need to know is that if you want to extrude into 3D, your 2D need to be a, uh, a joint, a polyline. Right, so it cannot be single line. So if I break it, let me just explode it as a single line. If I try to extrude, it will extrude as a surface instead. Right, so you need to make this one as a polyline. So let me just join this together to convert it into a polyline. Right, so I can click extrude and I can extrude it out and the length will be around 120. And I have this object over here. So this will be my bodies. Now, I want this to be arranged along the sides. So if I want to move, you can go to modify. You have several other tools such as the 3D move and 3D rotate. So this allow you to easily move. So when I click to remove, select the object and press enter. This arrow will pop up and then you can use this arrow to move it around. So for this case, I want to rotate. So let me just click to rotate. And for there, I can basically rotate my object. So let's say around 90 degree. And I want it to be on that position. 90 degree, something like this. Right. Let's say if I want to extrude my face just to make it a little bit longer or shorter. I can use extrude face over here or press pull. So let me just choose press pull and I'm selecting this face. So if I click, it will become higher. So let's say if I want to cut it, so I can just input the negative value. So I'm going to input negative, let's say around 60. So I'm cutting to 60. Now, what I want to do is that I want to move this into this object over here, and I want to mirror to the other side. So how to move this into here? So if I try to move it manually using like this, not very practical. If I use move command, you can also use 2D tools from here, like, such as move or rotate. If I use move command, press enter, I can select at the point over here, and then I can try to insert at the center of it. Right, but this is also not very practical. So in order to do that, you can use tools over here, which is 3D align. Right, so before I use 3D align, I want it to be at the center. So let me just draw something first. Right, just another reminder, reminder. So you need to have the X and Y in order for you to draw. So for this case, I can use from the coordinate, which allow you to change the UCS, which is the X and Y uh, face. So just pick over here and selecting this face. So this will be the face of this object. Okay, all right. So I'm selecting the different one. Let me just reselect that. This face. Okay, let me just reselect. This. Okay, for some reason it's selecting different faces. This okay, never mind. I can also use this and accept. 
Uh, so from here, I want to make some marking just to make sure that this is as the center of this object. So this will be the center. But for me to move, I can use this 3D line. So if I want to change back my UCS, I can click uh, UCS world. So this will be changed back to normal. So I can use this 3D line. So 3D line, you need three point to the object that you need to move and the three point to the object location. So I can select to remove, select the object and press enter. And then you need to select the first point, the second point, and the third point. That will be the face. And I want to mark at this point. Let me just select this point, this point, and also this point. Right? And I can press enter. So if you want to easily see, you can just change it to 2 d wireframe. And you can easily see uh, what's the area that you have clicked. Right, so let me just change back to shadow edges. So the next thing that I want is the uh, hole. So for that case, I want to move again my UCS face to this location. Set. And then from here, I can draw for the home. Sometimes uh, the other object might interfere. So if you want to temporarily disable, so you just click, right click, and from here, you can hide the object. So let me just click and select. Let's say this will be around five. And I want to put a hole over here, say around five. All right. So from here, I want to put a hole. So in order to do that, you can extrude. And later, you can use that extrusion as a cutting tool. So I have an extrude part works. And then from here, I need to make a six hole. So I can go ahead and use my polar array and selecting the object that I needed to array across center, and then you need to select the points of rotations. So similar with the 2D. Once done, I can just close. And then to cut it, you can go to study editing. And from here, you can use the subtracts instead. So you can select subtracts, select the object that you need to keep and select the object as a cutting tool, which is this one. So this will be removed and it will keep the hole on the object that we want. And then I can press enter. So the hole has now appeared. All right, so to open back my object, so I can just go back. Uh, I can just right click and go to isolate and end object isolation. So this will bring back my object that I have height before temporarily. Right, so for this case, I also need to create over here. Right, so for this case, I need to create a sphere. Based on here, we have some sphere ball over here. So for this case, to easily create, I can just go into the primitive and I can select the sphere. And from here, I can just simply enter the world. So it will automatically create. Sphere right. So next, what I would like to do is that I would like to mirror to the other side. So sphere might be interfere with your view. So I'm going to hide. So, so you can just click at the sphere, right click, isolate, and select hide object. And to mirror to the side, you can select to the mirror, select these two objects, and then press enter, and select this. Uh, plane over here as a mirror line. So first point, second point, and the third point. So it will mirror to the other sides. So let me just bring back my uh, sphere. So I'm going to end object isolation. So we have our sphere over here. All right. So from here, next thing I want to do is that you can see this tree is a separate object. So if I want to combine, I can go to study everything. And then I can select the solid union. So this will allow us to combine these three objects. Select over here. Select the object that you want to combine together. And then you can press Enter. 
this will this will combine your objects. So let me just mix a preview. Let me just go to the to the reference and see what actually happened. So I have separated. So if I go into the to the view, so this is object that not yet combined. So if I select the combine, select this object, this object, this object, you can see the object is actually interfere because it's not yet combined. Once I'm done, I can press enter, and then it's now combined into one. So you can see it's not actually interfere anymore. It's now become part of the object. So when I select, when I select it's selecting the entire object. Next thing is, let's say uh, if I have some edges over here and I want to remove these edges. Right, so for this case, you can use fillet command. So this is the 2D fillet, but still can use on the 3D object as well. So you can just click the fillet, select the object, and select the edges, the first edges. And over here, you can enter the value. So for this, I want to say around 5 uh, radius value, and I can press enter. And then selecting the rest of the edges that I want to fill it. But so once done, I can just press enter. So we have this shape over here. So it becomes simply like this. Now that we have done that, next thing that I would like is this over here, including the handle. Over here. Right. So let's do that. So from here, I need to put this cylinder first at the middle over there. So just to make it easy, I can just click over here, just to create a line so that I can create a cylinder at that line over there. Right. So for this case, I can the first, I can hide first, and I have this line over here. And this line, I can use it to create cylinder. Oops, cylinder. Okay. So the cylinder, let's say around 40. So I'm going to give it 40. All right, so 40 should be the diameter, not the radius. Let me just change into diameter and 40. The height will be, let's say, around 35. And I have this single camera jet over here. So uh, I have this line over here, this to the line over here, so I don't need any more. So let me just delete it, and we can proceed with the 3D object. So let me just turn back on and end the object exhibition. So we now have this part over here. All right. so next thing is I need it to create at the top over here. So this will be something like a round, but have some different type of angle. Of so for this case, I can create a uh, fit using uh, the revolve, right? So I need to create at the middle over here, and then I can revolve around this cylinder. So in order to do that, you can use your mouse to create uh, the plane line at, at the top over here. So uh, previously, I have told you, you can use the face. And then when you click the face, the face will become something like this. Right. But this is not the area that I want. I want it to be at the front view over here. So I want to create and draw at the front view. So for this case, I can also click at my UCS, which is this X, Y, Z. And I can grip and move it around. So I want to move at the center of like this. Let me just turn off the auto first. I can just turn off and I can select at the center. And like I mentioned before, this is ZX. You need to have XY in order for you to draw. So I can click at the grip over here and I can also move over here. So right now it's now become the XY. Right, so X, Y direction, and I can have this grid at the back, which allow me to draw. Right, so now that we have, so I can proceed to draw using some lines and so on. 
So for this case, I'm going to draw, let's say around 20 and 10 and another 10 here. Something like this. But so before that, I will hide this one first. And I just to perfecting my object right here. So this one, well, let me just skip first. So we don't need this to, but we don't, but we do need this, all of this. Right, so from here, I can join all together to this one. And I can use revolve. So this, I can use revolve. So this allow to create a tree based on the rotation. Right, so this is the revolve. Right, so I want the revolve will be full rotation, which is 100, which is uh, 360. So I can just enter and we have this full rotation based on that draw that we have previously. Right, so next thing is I want to have some pads at the below over here. So I can add some pads, which is I'm going to create using cylinders. Let's say this will be around 35. And the thickness is around two. But then next thing is I want to pick the other one, which is at the top over here. So for this case, I want to reuse back this. So I can copy this one. So select to copy. And then from here, I can just move at the top. But at the thickness over here, I want to be a little uh, shorter compared to compared to this one. So I can use plus pool, select the top, and I can input the negative value of, let's say, around five. Right, so I have this, and I can reuse back the 3D line, and just to align at the top over here. OK, let me just move back the form view. OK, so 3D line. So object. First point, second point, and the third point. And first point for here. Oops, let me just see. OK, let me just click and select the center. Right, so first point, second point, and the third point. Right, should be, okay, I should have uh, rotate this one first. Okay, oh, let me just change it to do the reference first. So for this one, this one, second point, and the third points, and here, This first point, second point, and the point. Oops. Okay, I accidentally choose different one. So let me just turn this one off first. Hide this object. Okay. Hit line. Center. This point. The points and. Set in the centers over here. First point and the second point. There you go. Okay. So let me just turn back on the view. And I can just end the object isolation. So this tree will be one object. So I can combine this object, this object, and also this object. Next thing is I want to create some boat looking object at the top of here, which is this. So I can, again, use my face UCS to click at the top over here. And I can use 
my polygon. Click. Let me do it. Okay, so let me just resize. Right, so I have done this. So here I can use to texture them works. And I will also want to make it a little higher. So here I can hide first. And I want to extend this. It's around 10. And object perception. So these two will be the same object. So I just do my mistake. Right. So lastly will be the handle. So I'm going to click the handle. So here I can just use cylinders. Just need to find the center of this. Here, oops. Or I can just use nine just to trace back the center of this object. Right, so much quicker. Right, so this will be, let's say around, um, 12, uh, 12 diameters. And the height will be let's say, 16. Right. And then the handle of this. Uh, of this trigger. Right. So from here, I want to create the rotating handle at the side over here, and then we can use the revolve to revolve that object. So from here, again, I can select this object and I can move, I can move my UCS at the top of here. And I can select just to snap it to the other side. All right, so from here we can start to pick the handle. So let's say the handle will be around five, five. And then I need to create the circles for it to handle. So let me just move this one first to this side. And then lastly, I need to create the circles. So this, let's say, around 70, so 70. And the handle will be around 6, 12. Right, so we already have these two and we can use the revolve to revolve along, uh, along this uh, handle over here. So this will be 2016. Last thing that we need is the holder of these two handles over here. So from here, I can move back to the top. And I can use this object. All right, so for this case, I'm just going to roughly create a lines. And I can just use the, oops, I can use the extrudes to extrude this. Say from five, oops, five to the other direction. 
So negative five. And we need to have, let's say, four of these. So I can use polar center, and I can select the middle over here. And this will be four. All right, so the shape has already appeared. Okay, so my handle is a little bit bigger, but we can just ignore this box. But to join, I can just use this union to join. And now we have this control. But so the, once we have this, lastly, we want to create a 2D based on these three objects. So for this case, we can go to the view tab over here. We have this base. You can drop down and select model from space, which is from this space. So click over here, and then you can select all of the 3D object that you want to include into the 2D, into the layout. So when you click, press enter, then you can select the layout. So I'm gonna go with layout one, press enter, and I can click over here, and I can click multiple views, and press enters. If I go to the layouts, I have this create view. If I want to create another projection, I can click projection, click this object, and I can create the isometric view of this particular object. Now you can see very quickly, this is created automatically, so you don't have to create 2D manually. Okay. So once we have this, I can change the, uh, the type of view. Let's say uh, you can see over here, it's, it's become a wireframe, which is including the header line as well. Let's say at the side over here, I don't want the header line. So I can just click over here. I can select edit the view. I can select the visibility, I'm sorry, the hidden line. Visible line. So it will only show the line that we see. And over here, I want to be shaded view. So I can edit the view and I can select shaded with visible line. All right, so we have some questions. All right, so from a whole, uh, any difference with the inventor, All right? So inventor is a lot different compared to the AutoCAD. So uh, inventor, we can say it is much more easy. It is much more uh, flexible. We can go back to the previous one. So once you create it inside of AutoCAD, sometimes it's hard to readjust the size of the already pre-made object. For example, this object, this handle. If I want to resize, very hard. But inside Inventor, even though you already created, you can go back and you can rechange back the size and so on. Right. So basically, Inventor is a lot easier. But in terms of generating, generating this 3D into 2D, like we did over here, is quite similar. So Inventor also able to generate 2D like this. So that is the uh, the difference between it. Right. And the Inventor also allow for uh, assembly files you know, together, but inside of AutoCAD, you can see we actually play around with only one object, right? So one file. Right, so I hope I answer your question. Okay, so once you have generating this 2D, you can go into uh, creating the uh, the unit dates, maybe you want to add some dimensioning and so on, right? so you can do it from here. Right, so is there any question that you would guys like to ask? So I believe we already hit the 3 to T and we can stop this session uh, right now. Uh. Right, so I believe no more questions from you guys, and we can stop from here. So thank you very much, uh, thank you everyone for joining this film lesson, and I hope I can see you guys again on our next film lesson. So thank you and have a nice day.